Bernice for the wonderful ministration. We would now invite the anointed jewels. They are a wonderful group who belong to this church and their ministry is on this altar. So let's put our hands together as we welcome the anointed jewels to minister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to continue on with our celebration and thank God for how far He has brought us. Amen. Oh, I don't 
Somebody make a joyful noise unto Jesus. Amen. 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 We want to continue dancing. It's a joyful day. And so we have to be glad in the Lord. Amen. Oh, no. 
jewels for the wonderful ministration we are grateful if you wonder why the celebrants 
continue to fellowship in this church. This is one of the reasons. Very good music. Let's acknowledge that to the glory of God. Please, let's take note of this. We have washrooms outside. The ladies is to my right. So you go outside, take an immediate right, come through this aisle, and then you have the ladies. Then for the gents, when you get outside, take the immediate left turn, walk through here, go up a little bit, just a little exercise, then you will get to the gents. Just one more uh, stairs up. Thank you very much. It is now my honor to invite Reverend Dr. Stephen Yenusu Wengam, the lead pastor of Cedar Mountain Chapel, East Legon Assemblies of God, to come and introduce the officiating minister for this morning. Let's welcome him with a very big hand clap. Thank you. Sorry, good morning. Your Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Lordina Mahama, former first family and celebrant for this august occasion. The officiating clergy led by Reverend Ernest Kwejoje, the senior pastor of this church, the 2020 running mate of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, Nananom diplomats and members of the international community party chairman and officials distinguished invited guests ladies and gentlemen it gives me great pleasure and it's a humbling duty to be called upon to introduce the guest speaker and officiating minister for the 30th world anniversary service of his excellency john dramani mahama and his beautiful wife lodina mahama Greg Johnson is the lead pastor of the Mission Church USA, where he has set for over 30 years leading the church into significant growth, the development of high capacity leaders, and multiple expansion projects of the fiscal facilities. He is an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God General Council USA. Pastor Greg Johnson serves as the executive presbyter for the eastern region of the assemblies of god new york network ministry and a member of the general presbytery since 2007. in that capacity he acts as leadership coach and consultant to the pastors and churches in the hudson valley capital and northeast sessions of new york state greg johnson is the founder and the keynote speaker of Global Leadership Training USA, providing ministry coaching and leadership training conferences for church, civic, and corporate leaders internationally. Since 2000, through this ministry, he has conducted over 75 leadership conferences throughout East and West Africa, India, South America, Cuba, Canada, and the United States. These conferences have been endorsed and attended by such leaders as Ghana's former president, John Dramani Mahama, our former chief justice, Georgina Theodora Wood, retired, the mayor of Kigali, Rwanda, the governor of Kampala, Uganda, as well as the Assemblies of God General Superintendents of Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, Rwanda, Cuba, and other international, other denominational leaders. Pastor Greg Johnson has authored numerous books on leadership and personal development, including Pressure Point, Where Culture Norms Meet Biblical Truth. Upward, Taking Your Life to the Next Level. Leadership from the Second Chair, How the Mighty Have Fallen, The Trust of Leadership, The Character of Leadership, Raising the Standard of Leadership, Ethics for Church Leaders, Conflict, Crisis, and Change Amongst Others. 
He regularly publishes an online blog that addresses topics on leadership and personal issues. Greg Johnson is, lives in New York with his wife, Laura. Together, they have raised five adult children and is blessed with four grandchildren. It's my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to present to you Reverend Greg T. Johnson, the guest speaker and officiating minister for this occasion. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day this is today. What a beautiful ceremony this is today. And I think I am among the most beautiful people in all the world right here in Accra in this church. Amen. Come on, tell somebody, wow, you look beautiful today. Go ahead, tell your neighbor that. Amen. Well, before I begin, let me first honor the father of this house, Reverend Ernest DeJay, for hosting this beautiful event and for also uh, agreeing to grant the privilege to me today to bring the sermon and to officiate the renewal of vows for our excellencies. Reverend DeJay, God bless you. We love you, we respect you, we appreciate you. Can we give an appreciation to Reverend Ajay? Amen. We are gathered here today to join former President John Dramani Mahama and former First Lady Lordina Dramani Mahama together with their family in celebration of 30 years of marital faithfulness and to witness their renewal of wedding vows. Hallelujah. There have been many great achievements of this couple in these two lives. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama served this nation as president, leading Ghana in economic growth, expansion of infrastructure. By the way, I love what President Mahama did with the airport in Accra. It is amazing. I have to say, I've traveled through many airports in the world, and your airport here in Accra is among the best. It is among the best. He is especially renowned for his policies to fight corruption, and is remembered as a leader of character, integrity, and humility. In fact, he has been awarded two separate awards from our organization, Global Leadership Training for Integrity and Excellence in Leadership. He is recognized by the Assemblies of God USA, internationally in fact, as among those within the Assemblies of God who have ascended to the highest offices of government in the history of our movement. He was especially invited to New York by our superintendent, Dr. Dwayne Durst, to receive a very special award for excellence in leadership at one of our recent New York Ministry Network conferences. Her Excellency Lordina Dramani Mahama will always be loved, will always be appreciated for her many humanitarian projects and for the Lordina Fanda Foundation an NGO dedicated to the welfare of the underprivileged, including service to orphans, uh, dislocated children, and many other vulnerables throughout West Africa. Amen. These two very strong leaders have both achieved milestones in their lives, but perhaps the most notable the most meaningful today is 30 years of faithful, devoted marriage. In a world where marriage is cheapened and even discarded, this is a significant achievement and an example that we desperately need today, not only in the church, but in the world in this 21st century. Your Excellencies, I thank you for this honor of officiating your renewal of vows. And on behalf of all of your honored guests that are here today, I want to thank you for your example of faithfulness and devotion in marriage. Amen. Can we give another round of applause to our 
excellencies. In fact, in the next few moments, I want to share three truths of enduring marriage that will serve as a context for our renewal of vows today. Three truths of enduring marriage. They come from Genesis chapter 2, where in verse 18, the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Verse 21 says, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Verse 23, the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of the man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and cleaves to his flesh, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this special occasion, this celebration of 30 years of marriage and renewal of vows. And Lord, we want to begin by giving you the praise, for you're the one, by your grace, Lord, who has sustained this marriage for 30 years. And Lord, we pray that you will add your anointing to your word today, that God, we may honor you as we honor this couple in marriage and renewal. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Three truths for enduring marriage. The first truth we find is in verse 18, when the Lord God said to Adam, I will make a wife that is suitable for you. First truth, an enduring marriage is designed by God. And God's design is very simple for marriage. One man and one woman for a lifetime. God said, Adam, I will make a wife for you. And that wife will be a woman. And what I join together, no man will separate. Marriage is not a man and a man. Marriage is not a woman and a woman. Marriage is not a trans woman and a man, which is actually a man and a man. Marriage is a lifelong union under God between a man and a woman. Amen. Now, most people today understand the man and woman part, but they don't always grasp the lifelong union part. A couple of years ago, there was a high-profile TV evangelist who came home to his wife, this is a true story, believe it or not, came home to his wife and informed her, today I met the woman God actually intended me to marry. Within two, two months, he divorced his wife, married his girlfriend, and relaunched his ministry. That is not how God designed marriage to function. Marriage is not the idea that I will love you and keep you until I stop loving you, then I'll trade you in for someone else. No. As soon as a man says, I do, he is saying, this woman is the one God has made for me, and we will live together until death we do part. What that high-profile TV preacher did is exactly what many married people are doing today. They are forgetting that their marriage is a binding, lifelong covenant created by God. The vows exchanged at an altar are not just between the man and the woman. They are vows to God. They are a promise to God. That this man and this woman will love, honor, and cherish each other until death. And the vows, the vows are important because anyone who's been married for more than a couple of years knows that it's not love that keeps us in marriage. It's marriage that keeps us in love. It's because we are determined through the vows of marriage to make the relationship work. 
It's because we have pledged to God and we do not see divorce as an option. It's because we force ourselves through the vows we've made to stay together, to endure, to work through our issues. It's that commitment that becomes the binding agent that holds us together and produces enduring love. Love does not keep the marriage. Marriage keeps the love. Now, I don't know about the Mahama household, but for my wife and, and me, we've been married for 36 years, we've learned that sometimes marriage can be hard. Do we have any married people here that can say amen to that? So marriage can be hard in Ghana. I wasn't sure. I thought it was just an American thing. There were times, especially early in our marriage, right around the sixth or seventh year, where my wife and I found it very hard to love each other. There were times that we didn't even like each other. There were times where she didn't want to talk to me, where she even wanted to leave me. But I told her, I told my wife, I said, look, we're at a hard spot right now. I, 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 we've got problems that are bigger than our ability to solve. But I said to my wife, I said, you need to know that I am committed to this marriage and making this marriage work whatever I have to do. And the next morning, I called a counselor. I called a marriage counselor. And my wife and I began a period of marriage counseling. And I want you to know that I hated it. And I hated the counselor. Because every time we went there, he would tell me the things that I needed to change, the things that I was doing wrong, and I always felt like he was picking on me. But I want you to know that that decision because of the pledges that we made and the vows that we exchanged to do whatever it takes to make our marriage succeed, change the trajectory of our marriage. And now, 36 years later, I can say that my wife is my best friend. And marriage has been the binding agent that strengthened our love together. That's the point. It wasn't because we felt love that we stayed together. It was because we made vows that we stayed together. Amen. And the good news is that when we honor God by doing marriage as He commanded it, God blesses marriage. Let me say that again. God blesses marriage. And when we honor marriage the way that God designed it, He will step into our relationship and He will bring the grace, He will bring the kindness, He will bring the fruits of the Spirit, He will help us to see what we need to see, and His grace will sustain us through those difficult times so that our marriage can be strong. How many can say amen to that? Thank God for His grace. Amen. And today, we see evidence of God's blessing in this marriage. Today, His Excellency and his wife, they are saying that this is the man, the woman that God made for me. And they're saying, if I had it to do all over again, I still choose you. Amen. The second truth about an enduring marriage is in verse 24. It says, a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. An enduring marriage, the second truth, has the right priorities. And the priority is no longer one's mother or one's father, which today can mean it's no longer the family's priorities or businesses or interests. It's no longer the family responsibilities or any other priorities of a single person's life. 
Instead, he will cleave to his wife and she will cleave to her husband. And they will become each other's focus. They, they will become the single most important priority in each other's life. Now the word to cleave means to be joined. To be intimately and resolutely connected. And this command to cleave to the wife has to be said because it's in man's nature to wander. I'll say that again. It's in the man's nature to wander. By nature, since the fall of mankind in the garden, men have become hunters and fighters and conquerors. It's in our nature. And unfortunately, after marriage, after we have conquered that woman and we have made her our own, men tend to go on to the next thing to conquer. We're conquerors by nature. Whether it be a career, success, education, wealth, athletics, politics, Men are always interested in fighting for and conquering the next challenge. And this is why many couples drift apart. The man becomes preoccupied with, with pursuing his next goal, and the wife feels neglected and unloved, and the marriage begins to sour. So cleaving is all about priorities. That the marriage is the priority, not the career, not the education, not the pursuit of wealth, not even the children. And if marriage is the priority, then time together is the essential in marriage. And by time together, I mean meaningful communication. That's right, men. Time and talk is how we cleave to our wives. Can everybody say time and talk? Did you know that after eight years of marriage, most couples forget how to talk to each other? A recent study asked 5,000 husbands and wives how often they talk to each other. After two years of marriage, most of them managed to talk two or three minutes over breakfast, about 20 minutes at dinner, and a few more minutes in bed. By the sixth year, that communication went down to about 10 minutes per day. And by the eighth year of marriage, a state of almost speechlessness was developed in the marriage. Now men can relate to this because many of us are not great at talking with our wives. Women use conversation to, to build intimacy. Men use conversation to just get information. One mistake I made with my wife early on, I wasn't really wise when I first got married. I told my wife, I said, I said, you know what I think would really help our marriage? If you could learn to use less words when you talk. And if you could try to get to the point more quickly in our conversations, I think that would really help our relationship. And my wife said, yeah, you want less talk? I'll show you less talk. <laughs> this is why the average woman speaks about 25,000 words every day, and the average man speaks about 10,000 words every day. Now, what does that mean in marital terms? On average, a wife will say she needs to spend about 30 minutes each day in meaningful conversation to feel secure about the marriage. What does the husband sitting next to her say is enough time for meaningful conversation? About five to 10 minutes once or twice a week. Most men, they go to work, they have about 10,000 words to use up every day, and they use them up at work. They come home, if the wife's not at work and she's home with the children, she hasn't really talked all day. 
So she's still got 25,000 words stored up. <laughs> and she's ready to go. But the man, he's used up his 10,000. Well, maybe your love language isn't conversation. Maybe your love language is acts of service. This is my wife. My wife told me, she said to me, do you know what makes you really attractive to me? She said, when you wash dishes. She said, I am never more attracted to you than when you are standing at the sink scrubbing a pot. So you know what I do every night before we go to bed? I wash dishes. <laughs> Maybe your wife's love language is physical touch, affection. Studies show that these women need 12 expressions of meaningful touch every day to feel loved by her husband. All you men, say 12. Oh, I see some brothers poking their wives right now. One, two, three. That's not meaningful touch. We're talking about three truths for enduring marriage. And today, our former president and our former first lady are saying to each other, I'm still cleaving to you. You are still my number one. And your needs will always be my priority. Amen. Now, there's, there's a third truth for enduring marriage. And it's in verse 25. It says, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. An enduring marriage is a marriage without shame. Now shame is a feeling that there is there's something wrong with me, that I'm flawed, that I'm somehow deficient. And when, when the Bible says that they were naked but not ashamed, it means that they did not feel shame when they were in each other's presence. That Eve knew this man loves me unconditionally just as I am with all of my blemishes and all of my warts and everything he loves me. Adam knew this woman respects me unconditionally and I don't have to prove anything to her to earn her respect. They perfectly illustrated Ephesians 5.33 that says the husband must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. Do you know that according to scripture the wife's number one need in a marriage is to feel genuine love from her husband. To know that she is valued. To know that she is appreciated and cared for. The husband's number one need in the marriage is to be respected, to know that his wife admires him and holds him in esteem. Love and respect are the two greatest needs in marriage. And when those needs are not met, shame enters the marriage. We start to feel insecure about ourselves and deficient about ourselves and inadequate that there's something wrong about me because my husband is not loving me or my wife is not respecting me. Now some men, I know when we talk about Ephesians chapter 5, they say, Pastor, can you just skip to the submission part of that passage? Doesn't Ephesians 5.22 say that wives should submit to your husbands as to the Lord? It does, but understand this. Healthy Biblical submission is not demanded, it's earned. That's why Ephesians 5.28 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. In other words, we cannot talk to our wives about submission or expect submission until we first talk to the husband about loving her as Christ loves the church. You see, it's the husband's ability to demonstrate genuine love that empowers his wife, enables his wife to submit to his authority. Think about it like this. We submit to Christ 
because we trust him. We believe that he cares for us, that he has our best interests at heart, and he will cause all things to work together for the good. When a wife knows that her husband likes that, when he loves her, and she feels like he has her best interests at heart, it empowers her to submit. But if that man is not loving her, not valuing her, then she doesn't feel safe. She feels shame. And walls go up, and she becomes defensive and insecure and unable to submit. So it's not a submission issue. It's usually a love issue. Husbands love your wives. Can you say that with me? Husbands love your wives. But listen, ladies, the husband has a need also. He needs to be respected. Verse 33 says the wife must respect her husband. It means to respect him as the man, as the leader, as the authority that God created him and equipped him to be. Now, wives, I know that you are very capable. Maybe you're very successful and accomplished in the professional world. You're very capable of making decisions and running the home. And sometimes you may feel the need to assert yourself and, and take over. Wives, I know many of you are very smart. Maybe you're smarter than your husband. So it would be easy for you to dominate him and debate him and belittle him with a demeaning and condescending tone. But listen, just like you want to be loved, if a man does not feel respected, he becomes a version of a man that is unable to lead you and to love you the way that you want to be led and loved. He becomes frustrated and withdrawn and silent and short-tempered. And he slips into an emotional self-preservation mode. I know it's wrong for him to do that. I know it's immature, but that's just how the ego works. He's in survival mode. Proverbs 14.1 says a wise woman builds her house but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands so wives learn how to build up your husband you know you have 18,000 words to say every day use some of them to build your house by encouraging your husband with powerful words psychologists say that if you want to make a positive impact on a person's behavior there must be four words of positive reinforcement for every one word of negative criticism. Did you get that? Four words of positive reinforcement for every one word of negative criticism. In the average ma marriage, the proportion is actually five negative words for every one positive. And it's no wonder that many marriages are struggling today. Now you might say, well, Pastor, are you saying that I need to coddle my husband and his emotional weakness? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you're speaking life into him. Proverbs tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. And wives, you have power to elevate and to strengthen and empower your husband to love you by respecting him. So these are the qualities of of marriages that are built to endure. They're designed by God. They have the right priorities. And they're marriages that build each other up. They don't tear each other down. They're without shame. And today, we are witnessing these truths in our former president and our former first lady as they come together today on their 30th anniversary to renew their wedding vows. Amen. And with that, I'm going to ask that His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Her Excellency Lordina Dramana Mahama, please join me here at the front to renew your marriage vows. And would you all please stand as they come.
Marriage was created by God as a lifelong union of love and devotion between a man and a woman for as long as they both shall live. We're gathered here together in the sight of God to celebrate and reaffirm the marital union of former President John Dramani Mahama and former First Lady Lordina Dramani Mahama. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for this couple that is standing here before us. We're thankful, Lord, for your grace and your blessing on their lives. And that, Lord, you have sustained them these 30 years. We pray, Lord, that as we move into the renewal of vows and the recitation of pledges, that, Lord, you will bless them and that you will hear them and that you will again add your grace and your strength to this marriage which you have created in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Her Excellency Lordina Dramani Mahama were joined together in marriage 30 years ago. On that day, they pledged their love to one another. They exchanged vows before God and gave each other rings as symbols of their lifelong devotion. In the years since, they have produced five children and grandchildren. And today, 30 years later, they may look a little different, but their marriage is stronger than ever. Amen. And that is what makes this, this event significant. The vows that they are renewing have been tried and tested over 30 years. They've seen the storms, the pressures, the pains, and even the disappointments of life. But here they are, having held fast to their vows to say to each other, if I had the choice to do it all over again, I would still choose you. Amen. Amen. President Mahama, 30 years ago, you pledged your faithfulness to your wife to live together after God's ordinance of marriage. You promised to love her comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and that forsaking all others, you would keep yourself only unto her. Now again, 30 years later, do you still pledge your devotion to Lordina Dramani Mahama as long as you both shall live? I still do. And First Lady Lordina, 30 years ago, you pledged your loyalty to your husband to live together after God's ordinance of marriage. You promised to respect him, love him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and that forsaking all others, you would keep yourself only unto him. Now again, 30 years later, do you still pledge your devotion to John Dramani, Mahama, as long as you both shall live. Yes, I so do. Amen. I'm going to ask you to join hands. President Mahama, do you still take Lordina Dramani Mahama as your wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward? for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do you part. I still do. Lordina Dramani Mahama, do you still take John Dramani Mahama as your wedded husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do you part? Yes, I so do. Amen. <laughs> now, when their excellencies were first married, they exchanged rings as tokens 
of their marital pledge. The ring, an endless circle, is a symbol of the lifelong commitment that began 30 years ago and continues between this husband and wife for as long as they both shall live. If you could remove your wife's ring. And you would place it on her finger. And as you do, let's declare that with this ring, you renew your pledge of marriage to Lordina. You can just put it on her and, and I'll, I'll recite this. Go ahead, put the ring on her finger. And with this ring, you renew your pledge of marriage to Lordina. It is a sign of your vow to love honor and cherish her for as long as you both shall live. Amen. That's good. It fits beautifully. Wow. Now, Lordina, Your Excellency, please take your husband's ring and you may place it on his finger and as you do, I will declare that with this ring, you renew your pledge of marriage to John. It is a sign of your vow to love, honor, and cherish him for as long as you both shall live. And it fits wonderfully. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Amen. I'm going to ask our host pastor to come, Reverend Ernest Ajay, will come please and will lead us in a prayer of blessing. I'm also going to ask if the family members would come and stand by your parents to receive this blessing in prayer. Shall we please be up and stand then? And shall we pray? So our Father, we are grateful and thankful unto you for a day like this. Thank you for preservation. Thank you for good health. Thank you for love. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We stand today, Lord, celebrating your goodness, your mercies that you have shown to this family 30 years ago. We pray that the years ahead will be fruitful, will be meaningful, full of good health, long life, and the blessings of the Lord. Make them, O oh God, a shining example to generations yet unborn. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We we'll pray for your peace and your blessings upon their lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we we'll this family. Amen. 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 And we add, Lord, to that prayer that there would be a blessing on their children and their, 
their children's children to the third and fourth generation and beyond. That, Lord, this would be a household of legacy. That, Lord, you will continue to pour out your grace and your goodness, Lord. That through the testimony of the Dramani Mahama household, your name would be glorified for years and years to come. Not only in Ghana, but throughout West Africa and the world. For, Lord, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus name and everyone said amen. amen let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise amen now the family you you may be seated and the family has requested that we would take a moment of communion for the family so we'll ask that the elements would come Father, we pray Hello. your blessing over these elements of communion. We recognize that, Lord, this is a remembrance that you have called us to observe. We pray, God, that you will bless this time as the Mah Dr Dramani Mahama family honors you by receiving these elements in Jesus' name. You can go ahead. Go ahead and remove the bread from the container. take the bread into your hand for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me you may partake of the element And now prepare for the juice. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes you may drink and so father in this act of communion where we acknowledge that it is only through the body and the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ that we have your grace to sustain us and we again pray, Lord God, that you will provide this family with the grace that they need. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Your Excellency John Dramani Mahama, Your Excellency Lordina Dramani Mahama, for as much as you have consented together in the renewal of vows, and have witnessed it before God and this company. 
and have again pledged your love and devotion to one another, I hereby affirm that this marriage is renewed in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. President Mahama, you may kiss your bride again. Amen. Before I conclude my duties, I would be remiss if I didn't present you with a special gift from my wife and me. My wife sends her love. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to travel with me now. But we wanted to give you a very special gift that celebrate 30 years of marriage in our country. It is a tradition that pearls be presented on year 30. So in this, you will find a gift, especially from my wife to you, that consists of pearls. And you'll also find a special gift from me to you as well. It will be a very special watch that you will be able to tell time for the next 30 years so that at year 60 we can gather again to celebrate the renewal of vows. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. I think we can do better in our clapping. Congratulations to His Excellency, former President John Dramani Mahama, and Her Excellency, Mrs. Lordina Mahama, for this great thing that has taken place that is renewing of your vows to each other. We would now have a spot of music from PC Esther and we would use that same song ministration to do a love of a tree. So we would be directed accordingly by the ushers and we will come from the back to the front as directed to drop our love of a tree. Let's welcome the team with a hand clap. It's a very weak one. If we want them to sing, let's welcome them with a better hand clap as we prepare to give our offer tree.
familia Oh, el lati ya estaba así
Esther and your able Bacchus and we want to say thank you to Reverend Greg Johnson for officiating this ceremony thank you very much God richly bless you and for those powerful and wonderful words that we all need to bear in mind in marriage. I can see that the former first lady is shining. She's extra beautiful this afternoon. And I have the right to say that because I am the husband. You know that. And we northerners know how to keep good wives, eh? So that is why you are renewing for another 30 or even more years. We pray that God will continually grant you strength to hold on. At this moment, we would want to acknowledge some dignitaries in our midst. And I have the honor to invite Reverend Dr. Stephen Yenesu Wingham to come and do us the honors. Let us welcome with Thank you, Mr. Wombe. I've been asked to do one of the most difficult assignments in a gathering like this, not according to any order. And if, with all due respect, I ask you to say in Ghanaian parlance, I butcher your name, forgive me. Forgive me. We have in our midst today, gracing this occasion, 
the former first lady of South Africa and her daughter, Her Excellency Tobeka Stacey Madi Bazuma and the daughter Nkobila Zuma. Oh, come on. Give them a Ghanaian warm welcome. Welcome. Akwab, as we say in Ghanaian terms. We have Nana Domahi. No, Nana Domahini Osajifu Ajima Bedu the first <laughs> Mr. Tahi Wahid Kreshi from the United Kingdom We have the families I request them to rise to the, the families of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Her Excellency Dina Mahama family members can you please rise to your feet brothers Sisters from all over the world, welcome. God bless you. Then we have the running mate of His Excellency 2020 General Election, Professor Nana Jane Obukwajiman. Honorable Samuel Fosu, powerful NDC chairman and officials of NDC, you welcome. Professor Kwame Nahoy is also in the house. Dr. Valerie Sawyer. Mr. Prosper Barney, Ambassador William To Boahene, Mr. Dele Momodu, Ovation, Nagzen, Auntie Shari Aite, and Auntie Modi Ado. We have also in our Miss Reverend Palma Jan, all the way from Germany, an uncle of former First Lady. Then we have the friends of Her Excellency Lodina Mahama from UK, Canada. Can you please stand to your feet and let's acknowledge you. Can you please rise to your feet? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then the chief of Enima, Kintampo South District. Thank you, Nana. The queen mother of Enima, Kintampo South District. Nanahima, welcome. All Queen Mothers present, can you please rise and let's acknowledge your presence. All Queen Mothers present, Nahima Edamase. We also have in our mess Mr. Kwame Despite and his friend Mr. Faris Sapon. God bless you for coming. We have our former Chief Justice, Her Lady Chief Justice Georgina Tudora Wood in our mess. Mama to Georgina, God bless you. We also have the CEO of Zoom Land, Dr. Joseph Ejapon, and his wife are also here. God bless you. Mr. KK, I'm a friend to the former first family. We also have in our mess, we have Alaji Huriaya, who has served this country for many years in various capacities. Alaji. Welcome. We have Auntie Maggie from USA, schoolmates of former first lady. Can you rise to your feet? God bless you for coming. Then we have our former um, chief of staff, Mr. and Mrs. Julius Debra is here with his wife. You are duly acknowledged. Then Professor Joshua Labi and your wife, you are duly acknowledged. Let me turn my attention to the clergy. We have in our midst, as I mentioned already, Reverend Greg Johnson from USA, and then Reverend Patrick Momoni Boachi, the Italy General Superintendent, is here. Reverend Dr. Mama Kwe is also here, a good friend of the former first family. Then, Dr. Mike, former governor of Bank of Ghana, is here. You are duly acknowledged on your wife. We also have in our midst here the regional superintendent, Accra East Assemblies of God, Reverend Andrews Nelson Awintia. We have the Accra West region, Regional Secretary, Reverend Michael Ayusu, and your dear wife. We also have in our midst Prophet Kobe here, yeah? Bishop Dick Isando, representing the Archbishop Christian Action Faith Ministry, and then all the pastors who are here, can you please rise to your feet because of time? Bear with me. 
we have the assist, associate pastor of this church Reverend Bentete the rest of you can you please rise to all pastors who are here bear with us thank you for coming God richly bless you amen thank you thank you for the reminder we have dr pony is also here you are duly acknowledged we we have two surprise presentations to make may i invite colleague members of the lodina foundation to join me here quickly board members of lodina foundation um your humble servant i'm privileged to chair lodina foundation and we have a special presentation to make to the former first couple and our founder and president her excellency lodina mahama and last this week tuesday we were in bali where the former first couple um having sponsored and built an, an ultra modern children hospital and maternity ward for the people of bali amen When I'm here, Honorable Kennedy is a member, of our board secretary, lawyer Presla Ajekum. This <laughs> Madam Presla, can you read the accompanying citation? The marriage on the hill. Yours has been a presidential marriage union, touring over many. Yours has been a blissful marriage relationship, defying all odds to become lasting and enduring. Yours has been an exemplary life partnership, teaching generations that make marriage a God institution, therefore must be honorable. Yours has been a lifelong love relationship, producing responsible adult children. Yours has been a perfect union, reflecting extraordinary love, peaceful coexistence. Yours has been a visionary love journey, impacting the vulnerable poor communities and the world at large with development and social relief. Yours has been a formidable marriage union, leading Ghana to greater heights of prosperity, stability, and development. It's been three decades of beautiful love relationship between His Excellency JDM and His uh, Excellency Madame Lodina Mahama. We wish you many more years of blissful relationship from the board of Lodina Foundation. also want to honor our founder this is um, the global samaritan award we are presented to our founder for her humanitarian activities towards the vulnerable in society again our board secretary will read the company citation global samaritan award the board members of Lodina Foundation unanimously confer on Her Excellency Lodina Mahama, founder, president of Lodina Foundation, and former first lady of the Republic of Ghana, the Global Samaritan Award, for being an unrivaled philanthropist, compassionate and ardent giver, empowering the vulnerable and disadvantaged to live meaningful lives, presented on 30th of July, 2022. Thank you, madam. You may 
miss it. We also want to invite a special group in this church. They are known as the the only in-house parliament in Ghana. The, I'm told they are a special group whose jurisdiction travels beyond church. They can summon you. I've been summoned to this parliament before for contempt and how to pay three goods. And their sanctions are always um, in, in, in goods, five, ten goods. So the spokesperson, Brady. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glorious 30 years. Congratulations, Your Excellencies, John and Lordina Mahama. On the occasion of your 30th wedding anniversary from the church parliament. We have the parliamentarians here. In fact, she is our speaker of parliament. Uh -huh. For us, on this day, as you celebrate your wedding anniversary, we are so happy and we join you to celebrate. So we present this to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Excellency, before you sit, um, before the first former first couple sit, we have honorable to the Bikwachi also in our mess. Honorable to Bikwachi, you are duly acknowledged, and then Domahini's wife, a very important personality, Nanahima, you are duly acknowledged. At this juncture, will allow the most recent renewed couple and gentleman, fresh for the next 50 years and beyond his excellency john mahama to give us brief remarks on this special occasion thank you very much i'd like to thank all our friends and loved ones for the honor you've done us today in joining us to celebrate this auspicious occasion i'd like to particularly thank Pastor Greg for the very powerful sermon. I'm sure that for all of us who are couples in this church, listening to you, we've taken a word or two that will help strengthen our marriages. And for those who haven't achieved 30 years of marriage, I'm sure Pastor Greg's sermon will encourage you to keep on and, and achieve 30 years. So I wish all of you that um, a day will come when you summon all of us to come and celebrate 30 years of uh, being married. I'd like to thank all our senior clergymen um, who are here today. Um, I have very close relations with almost all of you here. And um, I said to Pastor Basie when he came to uh, congratulate her that, I mean, uh, that's, that's it, it's sealed. He's my rival, and uh, we've been we've been quarrelling over her. Hey, after 30 years of marriage, you are finished. <laughs> I'd like to thank the representative of uh, Pastor Duncan, uh, Reverend Duncan Williams, for joining us, and all of you uh, clergymen who are here. I'd like to thank Don Mahini, who has been a friend of the family for so many years, for finding time to join us. Our friends uh, from South Africa, Lordinas, very good friend. Um, both of them were first ladies together, Mrs. Zuma, and they struck a very good relation. And she's come all the way from South Africa to come and honor Lodina on this 30th anniversary. I'd like to thank a special friend, um, Mr. Tahir. Uh, he's come all the way from UK. Um, he should have been here with his family, but there's a wedding. And he had to choose between the wedding and coming for our 30th anniversary. So he asked his wife and children to go to the wedding and said he is coming to Accra to join us for our 30th anniversary. 
want to thank my family that have been my bulwark and support in all these years uh, of both my career and my marriage. I want to thank Lordina's uh, family too. Um, that's why the fact that two people marry, you have families behind the two people. And the families are the support systems that help the marriage to hold. And so today, the compliments go not only to the two of us in working things out and being able to keep at it for 30 years, but also to the families that are behind us who continue to support us. Um, there are people who might not be the same blood as you, but they are as much family as your own family of flesh and blood. And there are many friends like that. I will not dare to mention them because if I mention some and don't mention some, I'll be in trouble. But they know themselves. <laughs> you know? And so I want to thank all of them. And also to thank my uh, party. Um, many of them are here. Sylvester, Auntie Sherry, Auntie Molly, uh, our chairman, uh, for example, Totobi, my in-law, Akonta, Huduyaya, and so many, so many. Uh, Mr. Kwam Nahoy and all of them. Uh, Joyce Bauer, my aide. And uh, I, I don't know who else, <laughs> how else to uh, thank everybody. Uh, but also to thank um, those who have worked at organizing this. Um, Obobia, Opokudaku, and uh, my special aide, Stan Dogbe, and uh, the many other Weasel TV crew and others who have made this a success. I'll just leave you with two things. You saw in the picture that was presented, the plaque, the, 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 the frame. Um, the one with two of us in the picture, it had um, us in two t-shirts. And if you read it, hers said the better half. And mine said the other half. <laughs> and so like Pastor Greg said, we are the other half. And these are the better half. And so we must work to become as good as them. And so it's work in progress. You will never achieve it before you die, but you have to keep trying. <laughs> And I'll leave you with a story. I'm, I'm sure I've told it to several of you already, but um, it's funny. 25 years ago, hey, five years ago, on our 25th anniversary, we did a Thanksgiving in the same church. And in the run-up to the Thanksgiving, we had gone to our pastor's office and were sitting, sitting with several of our friends. And she talked about, you know, 25 years of marriage and how she's done so well you know, to keep this marriage. The marriage is alive because of her and all that. <laughs> I was a bit younger and foolish at the time. And so, Pastor Greg, I went into an argument with her about who has kept the marriage alive. And I said, it's rather me. I'm the more humble one, the more patient. And we had an argument, you know. And so when we finished, then we were leaving our pastor's house. Uh, Kweje, who's my spiritual mentor, called me back and said, why do you argue with her? You can never win that argument. So, <laughs> so just don't try. And so I, I, I said, okay. Fast forward. Five years later, 30th anniversary. And it's like deja vu. We're in the same office with almost the same people there. In preparation to this 30th anniversary. And the same thing she said about how the marriage has survived because of her and you know <laughs> men you are a handful you know to manage and i've done well to manage this man and then what my pastor said kicked in i remember he said you never win this argument so i called all of them i said oh pastor ben pastor Kweji, all of you come come and thank this woman so much for me <laughs> She's been, she's been my pillar of strength. I mean, but for her, this marriage would have broken down long ago. She's tolerated me. Men, we are so troublesome. You know, she's done very well. And then she was quiet for a while. And then she looked at me and said, did they put something in your tea this morning? <laughs> so thank you all very much. And God bless all of you.
you very much, Your Excellency, for thanking us. Let's take note of the following announcements. When we leave here, we would have a reception at the forecourt of the Assemblies of God headquarters. The place is already properly arranged. So when you get out, you take the left turn and go to the courtyard. In between, we would be taking some photographs and we'll be duly guided as to how to proceed. So please, if it is your turn, somebody would indicate that and then you go and take the photograph. In recession, we would have a recessionary song and this is how we would proceed out. The main celebrants would take the lead followed by the clergy and after the clergy we would follow in order of our views. So please don't be in a rush uh, to go out. We would do it orderly and gently. We also finally want to acknowledge the presence of all NDC regional chairmen in our midst. If they are here, can they be upstanding so that we acknowledge them? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for gracing this occasion. We would now take our closing prayer. And at this time, I would want to invite a very wonderful man who is the immediate past president of the best school you can have in Ghana. That is the Presbyterian Boys Secondary School. Legon. Not Osuo, Legon. If you don't add the Legon, then it is not. There are many presects, but there is one presect, and after that is what? Legon. And that is, he's our immediate past global president. That is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International to come.